Hi everyone. Hello. How are you doing? I hope you are doing good. So welcome to another video of human health and disease. Uh, in this video, we will be talking another uh, common diseases of human that is Ascariasis, Filariasis and Typhoid. So let's begin with the first one that is Ascariasis. Okay. Uh, now basically Ascariasis is an infectious disease again, uh, which is related to your GI tract of your uh, intestinal tract. This is basically caused by round worms. Okay, uh, like round worms, which are known as Ascarius lumbricoids. They are known as Ascarius lumbricoids. It is an endoparasitic round worm, or it is a nematode, or nematode you can call it as. Yes, endoparasitic means um, they will invade your, uh, go inside your uh, cells of the intestinal, uh, uh, intestinal cells. Okay, so the pathogen name is Ascarius lumbricoid. What type of uh, a pathogen it is? It is a round worm or a nematode. Uh, what is the mode of transmission of uh, Ascarius? That is how can one can acquire Ascarius is either to contaminate soil, water, vegetables, fruits with stools again. So the earlier one that is um, amoebiasis was also because of the fishes contaminating food, water uh, and soil. Similarly, here also, uh, the Ascarius lumbricoids, the round worm, if they contaminate soil, water, fruits, or, uh, you know, vegetables, etc. So, they make these uh, things contaminated. And if it happens to come in contact with any healthy individual, the individual might develop Ascariasis. Okay. Symptoms are uh, obviously GI tract symptoms like internal bleeding, bleeding, muscle pain, fever, anemia constipation, blockage of the intestinal passage, presence of uh, the live worms in the fecal matter. So if you're passing stool and if you happen to see these uh, these uh, round worms, then chances uh, that uh, this is an indication that uh, one is suffering from Ascarius. Okay. Also pulmonary disorders. It might also lead to pneumonia, coughing, sneezing, etc. Vomiting, fever, weight loss can also happen, loss of appetite and uh, num uh, your uh, anemia that is... Uh, the uh, number of uh, RBCs will go down. Yes. So these are the symptoms. Uh, treatment or medicines can be, you know, that can be used to kill roundworms. They are ascaricides. That is, examples are uh, uh, albendazole or, let me just uh, circle this, albendazole or bebendazole. These are two drugs which are mentioned, <coughs> which can be used to treat uh, uh, kill these roundworms. Another anti helminth drugs, uh, which is there in your textbook, are uh, uh, piperazine, okay, then uh, leve, uh, levamanisole, then pyranantel. These are also uh, drugs which can kill these uh, roundworms in your stomach, okay. Uh, so, diagnosis is first uh, examination of your stool, microscopic examination of your stool, and then giving you these drugs to kill the uh, roundworms in your intestine. Yes, if you see over here, uh, if you the life cycle goes like this, the ingested parasite attacks your small intestine, then attacks your lungs, then uh, you know attacks your uh, lungs, then which can finally enter into the bloodstream. Okay, so this is a more simple life cycle. So if contaminated food is there from the soil, let's say contaminated food swallowed by a man reaches the intestine, then the blood, through blood reaches the heart, the lungs, the tracheax, that is, you know, I told you pneumonia or respiratory conditions uh, can take place. If a person is suffering from escariasis, then reaches the pharynx or, or, or uh, esophagus, uh, esophagus, okay, which... Uh, leads to the adult worms in the intestine and then adult worms can be released into the feces uh, and then again it can contaminate the soil and then the cycle goes on. So this is how the Ascaris lumbricoids uh, infects a particular individual. Yes, so mainly it is a gut disease. Even uh, earlier uh, the entamoeba histolytica that is amoebiosis that is also targeting mainly your uh, GI tract. This also targets mainly your GI tract. Moving to the next disease, that is filariasis. Now, filariasis also is a worm disease. Thread-like worms or nematodes are there. This is also because of the worm. Okay, these are parasites again. See, up till now, malarial disease, malaria is also caused by a protist parasite. Then, Ascaris is also a parasite 
बट अराउंड पैरासाइट फिलियर इज ऑल्सो पैरासाइट वोम पैरासाइट अमीबोइसिस दैट वी डिस्कवर्ड इन दिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो दैट वॉज ऑल्सो पैरासाइट बट इट वॉज ए प्रोटेस पैरासाइट ओके so this nematode are parasites uh, they can transfer from one person to the another person via mosquito bites this is because of mosquito bite so the pathogenic agent in the mosquito is uh, wisteria bancrofti and wisteria malayi okay they are also known as filarial worms uh, how do you get that is we have just mentioned mode of transmission is by bite of female culex mosquito in malaria it was anopheles mosquito in malaria it was anopheles mosquito here it is female culex mosquito okay culex is the species name symptoms are uh, swelling as you see in the picture swelling edema worms in the live uh, uh, sorry uh, living worms in your lymphatic vessels which will be usually in your lower limbs that is the legs which will lead to thickening and swelling of the organ of your limbs causes chronic inflammation of the organ in which they may live for years and limbs and genital organs are deformed as you see because of the swelling because of the edema limbs and genital organs may become what deformed the shape might uh, change okay they affect the legs arms breast scrotum etc currently there is no vaccines yes of the uh, filarial worms another name is also known as filarias is also known as elephantiasis okay so you might have seen any per, some person uh, they have big big legs uh, deformed legs so that is a disease uh, it is also known as filariasis okay mode of transmission we have discussed symptoms we have discussed uh, what are the pre uh, preventive measures that is obviously wearing long sleeves pants to prevent the bite of the mosquitoes using mosquito repellents mosquito nets etc these are some of the measures that can be used for controlling filariasis okay now treatment and diagnosis is uh, applying bead based uh, insect uh, repellents Th these uh, combination of uh, certain substance substances which are known as uh, a deed okay they will help in uh, preventing the mosquito bites okay building up of stagnant water should be prevented using mats coils uh, and nets if possible um, before moving to the life cycle i would like to uh, mention about the uh, the drug that can be or another uh, treatment that can be used is uh, use of diethyl uh, carbobazine citrate okay so this is another uh, treatment drug that can be used twice a day okay which will help in for uh, uh, for up to 3 weeks uh, and uh, after that 5 days for 6 weeks can be used this is effective in killing uh, the filariasis worm in the system okay so then these are some of the measures that can be taken to prevent the control of the disease moving to the short life cycle of the filarial parasite number one is uh, mosquito takes a blood meal that is the mosquito enters bites the human and if the mosquito if the mosquito is infected with the nematode if the mosquito is already infected with this filarial uh worm if it happens to bite a healthy individual now this will enter a healthy individual now the adult will have worms in their limb system then the adult will produce microfilarial sheathed microfilarial that is now worms which are covered uh, and thread like worms they will now acquire the shape of thread like worms now they will move to the lymph and blood channels okay at this stage you can do a blood test and find out uh, basically blood test is required to find out if the person is suffering from this uh, filarial disease or not then mosquito takes a blood meal again uh, which can so if this now this person got infected with this uh, worm and if another mosquito bites this person if he happen uh, the mosquito happens to take up the filarial worms okay the rest of the uh, cycle is completed in the mosquito just like uh, malaria so microfilarial penetrate mosquito midgut and migrate to thoracic muscle of the mosquitoes uh, of the mosquito now in that they are in the larval stage then uh, they will now 
develop into big worms. Okay. Now they are mature after the uh, larval stage, they are mature. And then from the uh, gut, from the thoracic uh, cavity, they migrate to the head and the proboscis of the mosquito. So when the mosquito bites the human, automatically this uh, filarial nematode can be easily transferred to the blood of the human. Okay, so this is a short view of mode of transmission of uh, Wuscheria bronchopathy, that is a posit uh, positive agent of filariasis. Okay, now moving to the next uh, disease that is typhoid. Now typhoid is a bacterial disease. Okay, very common disease. Uh, I mean, every other person might have typhoid once uh, in his or her lifetime. Okay, it is again infection of the intestine. And the pathogen agent, which is bacteria Salmonella typhi. It can spread through contaminated food and water again. Okay, it's a food and water bowl diseases. Uh, so you have insects like uh, butterfly and cockroaches feeding onto uh, the stool or the fecal matter. Uh, which can transfer the bacteria to the food material, etc. So poor hygiene, basically, and poor sanitization, they are responsible for spreading typhoid. Okay, so how does it uh, affect human? It enters the small intestine through contaminated food and water. It enters the small intestine through contaminated food and water. And then afterwards, uh, after its multiplication, it reaches to other parts of the uh, body with the help of blood. Okay, with the help of blood, it will move to other parts of the body. Symptoms are again high fever, 39 to 49 to 40 degrees Celsius, headache, weakness, stomach pain, constipation, loss of appetite, then white coat on the tongue, coughing, loss of appetite, then uh, uh, abdominal pain is there, constipation is there. Okay, so this if, if typhoid is not treated at time, one might feel suffocation, breathlessness, irregular heart, heartbeat, uh, also hemorrhage can be one of the symptoms that can be observed in untreated typhoid. Okay, uh, intestinal perforation and death may also occur in serious cases. How do you diagnose typhoid? Obviously, with the blood sample. So this Vidal test is very commonly known for confirmation of the typhoid bacteria in your blood. Okay. So, treatment of typhoid will involve uh, surgical removal of your blood. Okay. Re uh, sorry. Sorry. Diagnosis will involve removal of your blood. And if it is very severe, then treatment can be removing your gallbladder in severe cases. And uh, treatment can include... Uh, <clears throat> so, this is the diagnosis part. Another agglutination test that will detect antibodies in a blood sample against two antigens O and H of the Salmonella uh, bacteria. Uh, basically, um, this Salmonella bacteria uh, is of uh, two types. Uh, one will have O antigen, another will have H antigen. So, de determining which type of Salmonella uh, species has, uh, you know, infected an individual. So, this test, Vidal test, which is based on the agglutination method that will be required to test the blood sample of that individual, uh, whether it is having O or H, and accordingly the treatment can be given. Okay, agglutination is basically, we discussed in the previous video when we were talking about uh, the different methods of mechanism of antigen-antibody reactions. Okay, so agglutination is one when both the antigen and antibody come together and they form a clot, basically, as you see in the picture. If you see uh, a centered dot like this, this is positive. Agglutination has happened. If this diffused thing has, uh, is there in the solution, so this is negative. Okay, negative, no agglutination. This is how an agglutination will look like. Okay. Yeah. Sanitation is basically very important. Treatment can, uh, I just mentioned, antibiotics like uh, chloromycetin is helpful in... Uh, uh, you know, uh, in treating the typhoid. Okay. So that's all with respect to typhoid. Now in the next video, we will be talking about these common diseases that is pneumonia, common cold, dengue and ringworm. Take care. See you in the next video. Keep revising.